Rayback, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, please do not attempt to apply these instructions on your own. This is another presentation of Raypack's Boiler Bite-Sized Bits. In this Boiler Bite-Sized Bits, we will cover the plumbing and mode selection process for the MDB and Xtherm hydronic boilers, and also cover basic water heater and pool plumbing too. It is important to know what kind of appliance you are installing. There is an ID card in each unit that specifies what kind of appliance it is. The Category 4 MVBs can only be ordered as a hydronic boiler or a water heater. They are not designed to be pool heaters. The, the Category 1 or Category 3 MVBs and Category 4 Xtherm appliances can be ordered as a hydronic heater water heater or pool heater. Note the wording, ordered and then plumbed. You cannot swap the heater type in the field. When ordering a hydronic heater, there are three possible ways to set it up. These are called modes and effectively are operating programs for the boiler. If the appliance has a water heater ID card, then it is a water heater and there is only one mode of operation. Same if the appliance was purchased as a pool heater. There is only one mode of operation there as well. This is a summary table for the hydronic type boilers. There are three modes to choose from, mode 1, 2, and 3. All must be plumbed primary and secondary as the MVB and external boilers are low mass. All three modes can be applied to single or multiple boilers, and all can run with or without outdoor reset. The difference lies in the presence or absence of an indirect hot water system. If there is no indirect present, then it is a mode 1. This is the most common configuration. If there is an indirect system present on the system loop, then it is a mode 2. If the indirect is present on the boiler loop, then it's a mode 3. Mode 2 can be ran with or without priority, while mode 3 is always with priority. We will discuss the details of mode 1 first, as it is by far the most common. Here is a drawing for a mode 1 primary secondary system with a single boiler. It's primary secondary because there are two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. And that's how you should refer to them, the boiler loop and the system loop, not the primary loop and the secondary loop. What you are calling the primary loop might be different from that which the person you are speaking to thinks is the primary loop. The place where the two loops overlap is called the decoupler. The decoupler is the magic of a primary secondary system. When built properly, this will allow the bigger system pump to run when the boiler is not running without forcing water through the boiler. This is a mode 1 cascade system. Boiler A on the left is the master boiler and boilers B, C, and D are the followers. All of the same decoupler concepts apply, only now they apply to the whole cascade. An important part of plumbing boilers in cascade is to use reverse return logic. The first boiler out to the loop is the last boiler to receive water back from the loop. So what makes a mode 1 primary secondary a mode 1? It's not what's there, but what's not there. There's no indirect domestic hot water system present. It's just a straight up hydronic heater. Moving on to mode 2 discussion. What makes a mode 2 a mode 2 is the presence of an indirect potable water system on the system loop. In mode 2 primary secondary, you still have the two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. The decoupler is still there to pressure isolate the loops. What makes this a mode 2 is the addition of an indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger tank on the system loop. A more detailed explanation of how mode 2 systems work can be found on the MVB and Xtherm Part 2 Wages Approach video. Mode 2 is also possible in Cascade. As with the single boiler system, the indirect domestic hot water tank 
is out on the system loop. When in Cascade, there can be only one master boiler, the A boiler here. The other boilers are the follower boilers. Always apply reverse return logic to plumbing cascade systems. The first boiler out to the system is the last in line on the return. So what makes a MO2 primary secondary a MO2? You have an indirect domestic hot water system on the system loop. Now on to mode three discussion. In mode three, the indirect domestic hot water always has priority. This is a mode three primary secondary single boiler system. The same plumbing is applied here. You have a boiler loop and a system loop. The indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger is on the boiler loop in this case. Mode three can also be ran in, in cascade. Here the A boiler is the master boiler and the others are followers. Being a multiple boiler cascade system, reverse return plumbing logic applies. It is in mode three because the indirect domestic hot water system is on the boiler loop. So what makes a mode three a mode three? It must be plumbed primary secondary and it must have an indirect domestic hot water system on the boiler loop. Here are some overall pointers on plumbing systems and how they relate to mode selection for type H boilers. Identify all of the parts of the system. Look for what is there as well as what is not there. Make sure it is plumbed primary secondary. In most cases, with no indirect domestic hot water present, mode one will be your choice. If you do have an indirect domestic hot water present on the system loop, then it's a mode two. If the indirect domestic hot water is present on the boiler loop, then it's a mode three. Moving on from hydronic and into type WH appliances, as in water heaters. With an MVB or Xtherm purchased to be a water heater, there's only one mode of operation. So the plumbing is more specific. Here's a drawing for a water heater application. Important notes. CD cold water always comes in on the outlet side of the boiler to be mixed with the hot water the boiler is producing on the way to the tank. Introducing the city cold water on the inlet side of the boiler will likely lead to going below the required minimum inlet temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, resulting in condensing in the wrong part of the boiler. Here the tank works like a decoupler, and the S3 system sensor is placed in a dry well in the tank. As with the water heater type, if it is a pool heater, there is only one mode of operation. Here the decoupler is the distance between the supply and return off of the recirculation loop. The two upper valves are there to isolate the heater for service, while the two lower valves are there for temperature regulation. I hope you enjoyed this boiler bite-sized bit. Look for more boiler bite-sized bits from Raypack. Ray Pack, engineered to perform, built to last.